what are the top nine quiet low-key luxury bags that are worth investing in right now hello everyone welcome back to another mommy review where i review all things for the love of today i want to talk about the top nine low-key quiet luxury bags that are worth investing in right now now before i get started if you like the content on this channel please consider giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel thank you so much for considering and on with the video now as i've grown a little bit more mature over the years i find that my bag collections i'm really drawn towards more low-key minimalistic bags nothing logo heavy that i find that's more prominent in a lot of my um bags that i got in my younger years i really want something that has like an ease subtleness to it still have quality craftsmanship without the prominent logo i really like the idea of quiet luxury something like unidentifiable despite the lack of branding but like if you know you know um, so I've come up with this top 9 list of quiet, low-key luxury bags that I hope to share with you. Bags that you can hopefully carry day in, day out, and in my opinion, something underrated is sometimes better. Less fuss, fewer logos, something that is hopefully versatile, and something that is a great smarter long-term investment something maybe when closer inspection then you'll notice a signature chain length or closure that give you the aha moment a stealthier bag so let's go over those top nine low-key quiet luxury bags the first one i want to talk about is probably the low-key winner is the louive brand the instantly recognizable louive puzzle bag i feel like the classic puzzle bag has stolen the hearts of so many handbag lovers over the years it's grown more and more popular over the years it's crafted from leather um that's like in this geometric lines and humanoid shapes that adds like a contemporary feel can be worn like so many different ways which i love how versatile it is with a uh, strap that is adjustable and detachable i think it's become an instant classic since it came out in 2015. it can be worn four ways like i mentioned there are so many sizes that it comes with i feel like there's bound to be a size that fits your needs and now i think they also have like a hobo version that's more relaxed and supple for those of you who are interested in that style of bags this one the mini puzzle bags currently priced at three thousand six hundred dollars they also have various sizes and color waves as well and you can see the small bag here is around five thousand one hundred seventy and then the mini here is $3,420. Number two is the Celine box bag. I feel like this is such a timeless bag to have in your wardrobe. Great investment. It's a simple shoulder bag that's beautifully rounded shape box, uh, as the name implies. It's like definitely one of the more underrated designer bags, a very simple classic design. It has a small clasp as you can see in the front and that's it no other unnecessary designs or accessories um, it's calfskin landskin lining of gold finishing usually made in italy this one is currently priced for the medium size four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars it's three compartments inside three pockets and two flat pockets in the front compartment definitely great for those of you who want to stay organized in your bag and the celine logo is only visible when the bag is open and then you see the inside metallic closure and it's embossed leather so that's number two number three is also from celine i feel like still celine has come out with a few bags that are just instant classic like the celine 16 here released in 2018. Uh, the numerical name is derived from the location of the brand's headquarters i love the shape of the bag the details of such crop the crop flap wow like it has a deep drop for the handle so you can have it look elegantly on the crooks of your arm and it's super classy this one for the mini is priced at $4,300 and if you are interested more about this bag, I have done a full review of this bag in my other 
video on the YouTube channel. It's made from this luxurious leather, like calfskin, and finished with like this really cheek turn lock. And has two internal pockets and also a sit flat pocket. Exterior also features one flat pocket under the flap. I think this is just a great way to stay organized and fabulous at the same time. Number four is the Picketon. Now, I think that when you're buying from Hermes, it is an investment. Picketon is a beautifully crafted bucket bag that's getting more and more popular nowadays, I find. I find that it is low key because it doesn't have any huge logo making it very like stealthy. Uh, I think it's considered a quote unquote more affordable price point and accessible compared to let's say the Birkin or the Kelly from um, Hermes. And I think this bag's been around at least since the early 2000s. It has two top handles on the top and it features the iconic Hermes lock and key and the bag consists of just one large compartment, no additional pockets or zippers. So I think that could be a con or deal breaker for some of you. Um, given the bag does not come with shoulder straps or crossbody strap and there's no zipper to secure the opening. The Picketon Lock 18 bag is currently priced at $2,875. Alright, now going on to the number 5. The fifth bag for low-key luxury bags is actually from Louis Vuitton, which I think some of you may be surprised by because Louis Vuitton is really known for their loud and proud, their monogram canvas. So I'm actually focusing specifically on some of the classic silhouettes and also on the epi leather that is specific to Louis Vuitton. So you can see it clearly in the Alma BB or also in the Clooney Mini. Both of which have the classic Louis Vuitton epi leather included in it. For example, both of these bags I find is like more compact size, can still hold quite a lot despite that. They're generally quite lightweight, multiple carrying options that can be dressed up or down. Has a top handle option and also have the option to include a strap for a crossbody bag. I just find that these two are just great timeless bags to include into your bag collection and has like the tiny Louis Vuitton logo at the bottom so if you don't look carefully and you don't really see the logo it's really understated yet classy bag that is just so perfect if you're looking for something a bit more low-key it can be worn both regularly without showing a great deal of wear because of the epi leather as well and the bag overall, I think, is a little bit more low maintenance. Um, let's say if you get stuck in the rain, you can easily kind of wipe down your bag with a cloth. So that's number five from Louis Vuitton. The Clooney Mini is currently priced at $3,450. And then the Alma BB in Epi Leather is currently priced at $2,500. And the Alma BB is just such a classic shape from this heritage brand. Now, number six, it's actually from Maison Goyard. Goyard is a 200 year old Parisian brand um, that's been largely on unknown. And I think because of the elusiveness of it, it makes it a little bit more low key. And also like, if you know, you know, it has like beautiful handbags um, with barely visible logos with the interlocking Y pattern that you see here. It's generally more under the radar. The tote bag, for example, are the ones that are more popular and also um, I think it's very handy as well because a tote bag goes with a lot of different outfits, very spacious, and it comes with a variety of different colors as well. And despite the prominent monogram associated with Goyad, uh, it's only recognizable, I think, by people who are handbag lovers. So everyone might know the Louis Vuitton tote, like the Neverfold, and if they're interested in fashion. But like, um, not every I think not everybody knows about Goyard. So I love this fashion house from France that has this alternate option for a more under the radar, low key luxury bag. So you can see the beautiful 
pattern here. I think that like a lot of people are unaware of the brand and the status because it's not available online. You can't buy it unless you go to a specific boutique. Um, and those boutiques are not available like in every country. So I feel like it's still a little bit more quiet luxury. All right, number seven is from the Gucci brand. I'm talking about the Horsebit 1955. The Gucci Horsebit bag was first released in 1955, and today is one of the house's most popular styles, I think. Uh, the design comes in leather, and now they also have some colorful canvases as well, giving you like lots of versatility, different shapes, sizes for you to choose from. I love like the front flap closure with the double ring and the bar. Just very iconic for the brand. There are many different sizes, so you're bound to find a size that really fits your needs. There's recent more um, hype about this bag. I think it's because of like the revisions related to it from the Cruise 2020 collection. I think it looks really good and is super functional. Moving forward, I think we're going to see a lot more archival pieces that are going to be re-inspired into a new collection and it's going to be a common place in the fashion world. I love the simplicity of the horse bit. It's just so elegant but still identifiable. The leather is hard wearing and robust without it being super heavy or too structured. So I feel like the Gucci horse bit deserve a special place on the list for low-key luxury handbags. Number eight is also from Gucci. It's actually the Jackie bag. Now, I think the original design came out in the 1950s and then the Jackie bag was reimagined several times. It was originally called the 50s Constance and now they've renamed it. It was, I think it was 1964, the bag was renamed for, after its icon, Jackie Kennedy. I think it's like a great everyday companion and now with like the resurgence of like people loving like kind of this crescent curve and like hobo style larger bags i feel like the jackie it's a great classic that will be there time and time again it's also one of those bags that are reinvented several times by different artistic care directors um from the archival lines it's best known for kind of this piston hardware I think it's just so cheek it makes the outfit looks way more polished when you put it together and with this beautiful handbag this one for example the mini jackie is priced at four thousand and eighty five dollars the night bag for the low-key luxury handbags is actually from saint laurent ysl i know that when we think about saint laurent we immediately gravitate towards the ysl logo um so we don't really think of it as an understated, um, low-key, under-the-radar handbag. But I'm focusing specifically on the Manhattan bag. Now this is the Manhattan small shoulder bag, priced at $3,385 Canadian. It is designed um, with the idea, it's like a little bit more classy looking, simple Italian made bag, a boxy silhouette. I feel like it does keep a shape over time it can be worn on many occasions go from day to night you can go shopping work or like evening with friends it has like the top handle it's also for the strap that you can use as a shoulder strap some people use it as a crossbody but i think it looks way better as a um, shoulder bag and then the metal hardware on the ysl manhattan comes in the gold tone bronze tone and also silver tone really depends on the material and the color and there's just so many ranges of material that come in like smooth leather there's also like the raffian smooth leather canvas leather crocodile and buzz leather ostrich leather common canvas and finished leather just so many options and sizes for you to choose from and unlike most of the ysl bags i just th i love how it just doesn't necessarily always have to feature the interlaced like YSL logo that you see commonly it just has the Saint Laurent Paris engraved on the front of the class and I love the simplicity of that well those are my top nine bags I would recommend to consider investing in at this time for low-key 
quiet luxury well what do you think about this top 9 list i would love to know or if you have any of these bags i would also like to know which of these handbags is your favorite out of the, the top nine and if there's other bags that i missed that should have made the list well that's it for now thank you so much for joining me on another handbag lover's journey and i'll see you next time take care and stay safe everyone bye for now Thank you.